Uh, my name is Danny Santoro, and it's the morning. I know we're all tired, so I just kind of want to get to know you guys first. How many of you, this is your first WordCamp? That's a lot, okay. How many of you are developers? How many of you are support? And then how many of you run your own business? Okay, that's a nice, good spread. Um, oh, and then who's speakers? So that way I can reciprocate and show up to yours. All right, only a few. That's all right. Uh, okay. So what I want to talk about today is unleashing WordPress and essentially showing you how we can bend it to fit any need that we really want. Um, there's some statistics up here that I pulled last night, so they're as late as can be. Um, but this is a remarkable growth since three months ago when I pulled the stats for a different conference. Um, it was something like a million additional sites, 0.3% uh, of the entire internet switched to WordPress in that time, and then the content management system percentage grew. So there's definitely something behind WordPress, aside from just the regular blogging platform, and that's kind of what we are gonna cover today. So here's just a little bit about me. My name is Danny. I'm from Cincinnati, Ohio. Uh, currently I'm employed by WooThemes and Automatic, and I specialize in the WooCommerce product, which some of you may use if you're store owners. Um, I actually graduated with a degree in filmmaking and only took one web design class in the entire time I was there, so funny how that worked out. <laughs> and then, um, yeah, I'm really just using this for Taylor Swift, so I heard radio's here. I don't know if she's here, but if you see her, tell me. <laughs> All right, so just a little bit about what I do and what I've done before. Um, I've worked for major corporations that had global online sales, and I managed that through a lot of different uh, content management systems that were really subpar or outdated. Um, I did a lot of local video work, and ever since I switched to WordPress about three years ago, I have never gone back. I tried Joomla once, it was a bad experience, and I never recommend it. Um, one of the things I love and do subconsciously is over plan. So if there's an idea, I will make a game plan for it and have all the details laid out. And the problem is then I don't know how to do that. So WordPress saves the day and I know I can bend WordPress to at least get a prototype running. So the first thing that we have to do is we have to understand WordPress when it's used as a framework as opposed to just what it is out of the box. So WordPress core is what we call the default WordPress installation right when you install it. It has blogs, uh, pages, and not much else. Uh, it's great for blogs, simple sites. It has a good user interface for front end and back end. It's got a relatively good SEO structure, although Yoast is here, so always switch to them. And then um, the big thing is that the flexibility that WordPress provides is unrivaled by any other content management system I've used. And this is just a side note that will help you and save you a lot of pain down the road. Always update everything on your site. Just trust me on this one. It's gonna be a nightmare if you don't. So the next thing I wanna talk about is themes. And these are the most visually apparent part of your site. Um, themes should be used only to dictate the display of your site. So we get this question a lot in support and it's probably one of the biggest problems that users have in their sites, that their theme is outdated, it's not compatible with WooCommerce or whatever product or plugin they're using. So I wanna talk about what makes a theme good versus evil. And there's really just a few key points. One, it has a straightforward, flexible set of templates. So this is a te um, page, post, archives, things like that, probably a home page, sidebar. Um, it's built to handle responsive design, so users on phones, tablets, computers, giant projectors like this 
it'll look nice and sharp no matter how they're viewing it. It adds very little unnecessary code and ideally zero features, which sounds kind of counterintuitive to a theme compared to the ones that we see on, uh, let's see, Envato or anything like that. Um, it does not use short codes or page builders to make templates. Just avoid this. Um, and then finally, it's regularly maintained with a good support team backing it up. So to hit most of these, just go to WooThemes.com. And yes, this is a shameless plug for the company, WooThemes. But um, they have a really good pair of themes that'll pretty much handle anything. Canvas is great for almost any, any site. And then uh, Storefront is a free theme that we released in the past few months that is built specifically for a WooCommerce site. So those are both great starting points for your themes. So plugins are an entirely different story. All of your custom functionality should really be added through plugins versus your theme. Uh, you can add functionality in your theme through the functions.php file, but plugins are better and here's why. Um, whenever you update your theme, the plugins will stay the same. And that's very important, I'll get to that in the next slide, but first, what makes a plugin good versus evil? Um, it has one feature and it does it well. The magical bullet plugins that say they'll solve all your problems, they won't. And two months down the road when you actually start getting orders and traffic, you're going to run into a problem that you have to disable a certain part of the plugin and then you find you can't. So you have to start from zero. Um, it has good documentation, it has a responsive developer and development team, and then, very important, it has some method of support if it's subscription or paid. Then another little note, <clears throat> there are a lot of uh, sites that resell plugins, specifically WooCommerce extensions. Don't buy from them. Um, I'm not saying this to bash those sites or anything like that, but the problem is we can't tell what code was injected into that plugin, so we can't support it. Um, and we ultimately it doesn't come with that support guarantee that WooThemes does. So yeah, it might be a little more expensive to go the official route. It's definitely worth it. And why are we doing it this way? Um, again, it kind of goes back to the switching themes. If your site does take off and it's around for a year from now, five, ten years from now, you have no idea if that theme or that company that developed the theme is still going to be around. If they haven't updated the theme in two years, all of the security updates that WordPress core is pushing out might not work. Your plugins might stop working. Um, so that's why we want a theme that really only controls display and plugins that do all the functionality because if we find a plugin that becomes outdated, we can always just find another plugin that does the same thing. Switch it out that way. And then again, avoid the builder all in one themes. So now that we've gotten that out of, way, out of the way, let's talk about what really makes WordPress tick. And there are three main components to that. There are post types, taxonomies, and meta fields. So we're gonna take a look at each one and kind of go into detail on how you can set those up. And creating these is usually done through a function or PHP code, which I know a lot of people, myself included, don't particularly like to write. So I'm going to promote a plugin called WP Types. And it's actually part of a group of plugins called WP Toolset and if you don't know PHP, I highly recommend it. You can build a full fledged site just with those plugins. But moving forward, post types. There are essentially two kinds of post types that WordPress can handle. There's post style and then there's page style. Post style is just like a blog. You can create additional post style custom post types and this could be used for a lot of things. It could be used for a database where things are dated. 
It could be used for creating multiple blogs that exist on the same installation, just with a different slug at the beginning. So instead of blog, it could be news or updates or things like that. And then there's the page style post type, which I probably use more often whenever I'm going about uh, building some custom functionality. But it's used for static information display. And you can see pages already in the default WordPress installation, but we can do a lot more with it, which we'll get into in a moment. Now there's taxonomies. These are for organization of your content. And by default, you're given category and tag, and those are kind of the two sort of styles that we have moving forward. A category is the main sorting method where you can divide your content into uh, broad but related groups. So let's say you had a blog that talked about everything technology. You could have one that was computers and uh, video equipment, then audio equipment, and then things like that. And the good thing about categories is you can nest them within each other. So we could have something like technology, computers, and artificial intelligence. This is a great way to uh, show your users kind of the structure of your blog, what you're blogging about most frequently, and where they can go to to see articles on that topic. Tags are a little different. These are for marking specific posts or pages as relevant to a specific keyword. These keywords are essentially what people would Google if they were looking for content that you offer. So if someone was looking for an article on artificial intelligence, you would probably do AI, artificial intelligence, computers, things like that. But they cannot be nested within each other. Um, so we'll come back again to that in a minute. Finally, there's post fields. And these are the actual areas where you can add content. Um, some post fields included in default WordPress is the actual content box, the author select drop down, uh, things like that. Um, you can do a lot with post fields and it records it just like any other information you would input into WordPress. You can do check boxes, radio selects, drop downs, text fields, areas, editors, really anything that you'd like. And this is all the information that someone would upload or include in a post. So some important, important notes before we really move forward is that both taxonomies and post fields can be shared across post types. So let's say you have uh, four different blogs in your site. One, again, the computer, video, audio, things like that. Um, for a taxonomy, you could have new, uh, review, opinion, something like that, or third-party uh, syndication, something like that. And those taxonomies would appear across all the post field or post types that you want. All right, and now I'm going to jump into some examples of what we can do using just what I mentioned before. So one really common thing that we get is people that want to create a company or personal portfolio. So I'm going to go step by step and just say how you can do this with these custom post types, taxonomies and fields that I mentioned before. First we use pages and posts as they're intended. Uh, then once we get into customization we can do a uh, post style custom post type called newsletter. And in this we can save it for the newsletters that we want to email out to subscribers. Once we create the article and publish it in that newsletter custom post type, we can set it so something like MailChimp could come in, pick up that article, and then send it out to your followers. So this is great because they don't get spammed with irregular blog posts and they only get the updates that you really want them to get. Uh, you create services that would list all of the services that you can provide to your clients. You can create portfolios to showcase your, post, your previous work. And then you can create team pages to give each staff member or teammate a bio or a contact page. And all of this functionality was done without a single plugin. So that's pretty cool because normally most sites have 30 plugins running, slows it down, gets messy 
try to avoid that situation. You can create a private directory or network with just two plugins. One is BBPress, where you can create forums and allow people to discuss anything they'd like. And then you can install BuddyPress, which allows users to create po profiles, message each other, uh, connect to third-party services like Twitter, Google, Facebook, things like that. And this is no reliance on a theme. We can just choose what we want, enable it, and then get going. Now this is where I really specialize because I work with WooCommerce day in, day out. So this is a lot of different things, but first you can install WooCommerce for basic storefront functionality where you can sell di digital and physical goods. And then of course there are shipping methods and things like that you can attach. One really cool thing you can do with WooCommerce is if you, on top of it, install groups and then groups for WooCommerce, you can essentially create a paywall or some method where users would pay for your content. So if you're a musician and you have an album that you want to digitally distribute, they can buy it right in WooCommerce, get access to the download, you can restrict the length of time they have to download it, the number of downloads, things like that, just with those plugins. If you install Sensei and WooCommerce subscriptions, you can create a subscription, so monthly based or yearly cost learning management platform where you can create really easy um, courses, quizzes, everything like that. It can all be automated, so it's hands off for you, or you can actually get feedback and respond to essay questions by users, and you can actually run a real course on it. And then finally, you can install WooCommerce bookings to schedule time and resources, such as hotel rooms or scheduling rental equipment, or let's say you run a business that fixes air conditioning units. You can actually schedule each of your uh, employees and vans and rent out the times that they would arrive at a person's house. So those are just scratching the surface. Uh, at demo.danielsantoro.com, I'm continually adding different little methods that you can manipulate WordPress and uh, WooCommerce in specific to create a certain scenario. And then this is probably my favorite, but it's creating a database. I personally don't like MediaWiki. It's confusing and just a pain. So there's two ways we can do this. First, we can install a theme like WikiEasy, which is from WooThemes again, so that product placement. But as we've talked about before, that might not be the best solution because all of your functionality is bundled into this theme. So instead, what we can do is create custom post types as needed. Uh, page style is usually what I choose, but you can create one for database articles, um, you can create a custom post type for a different kind of database article so it has a totally different layout. And then you can create custom meta fields to allow for information like date of birth, country of origin, author, uh, numeric value, a price, whatever you'd like. And then you, again, can create page layouts. So a very simple example of this can be seen at the demo site that I provided before slash game. This is actually a cool little thing that I don't have time to get into today, but check it out and you can see kind of how to get started there. So I know that this is kind of a lot to take in. Um, there was a lot of terms, there was a lot of should, should and should nots and everything like that, but it's all very important information because what we've done is we've established that we're no longer relying on a magic theme or a plugin to do all our functionality. And instead of having to do workarounds with existing themes, we can build out that functionality on our own. And the best part is by mixing up all the components that we mentioned before, we've really opened up the world to WordPress and Simply put, WordPress can do absolutely anything that you want it to. It's just a matter of figuring out the best way that it can be done. So, with that in mind, the floor is yours. This is my favorite part of talking at any WordCamp because what I want you guys to do is if you have, if you came here for a specific thing, like you're looking to fix your 
site or try to add this functionality or if you have a site in mind that you'd really like to get running but you have no idea where to start, now's the time to raise your hand. On the fly, we'll try to solve it. I might get stumped. I apologize ahead of time, but I'll do my best. And uh, yeah, so does anyone have the kind of idea? Go ahead. Could you go back to your previous slide? Sure. Number two, mm -hmm. sorting them. Uh, my background was mainframe development, mm -hmm. the major aerospace. And a year and a half ago, I discovered development on the internet. Mm -hmm. And um, WordPress's sorting methods that come built in, I find to be uh, so lacking uh, what users need to be able to sort. Right. They're based on a date, mm -hmm. and if you try to set up a Leva CMS that's an online encyclopedia for a sport, then it's huge. Mm -hmm. And uh, and and the what I, the workarounds I've had to do to be able to get it to sort historically even. Mm -hmm. that, you know, it's it's like it uses, um, I forget the name of the sorting, it's not a natural sort. Right. It's using, it goes from 1 to 11 to 12, 13, 14, then goes to 2, then to 20, then, and there's a name for that, and it's like, um, so, uh, you know, we've had to do so much work around mm -hmm. to be able to deal with it. I have contacted the VPNU dev tons of times, they give me names of plugins, oh, yeah, this will help. And they did, and they did make it much more difficult. To be perfectly honest, you know. Right. And uh, you know, have you got any kind of a suggestion for something? You say when you include sorting methods here, as if mm -hmm. this is something to take for granted. Well, if you want to use a date or that really ridiculous numerical sort that they use that goes from one to eleven to to twelve, and then from two to twenty, mm -hmm. yeah, there you go. That's wonderful, but. The real world doesn't sort like that. Right. And mainframes haven't been sorting like that forever. Mm -hmm. And PCs don't sort like that. Right. And so WordPress does. It's like, what is this? We've got to pick a thing created or the stupid numerical sort method. Other than that, it's ridiculous. I'm, it's my own personal opinion, but I'm basing it on my background with mainframe. Sure. Okay. Um, so in response to that, I guess. Uh, how would you like your data to be sorted? Is there a specific one Even way or just? A natural number order would be great. Okay. Without humongous workaround, which we now have with, with a huge amount of workaround. For sure. I, no idea. I had to set up custom sidebars and all kinds of menus and things and, mm -hmm. and drag and drop things in in order to get everything the way it should be. And yet. I'm sorry. I have an answer too. So, yeah. they, so are you trying to sort post types or are you trying to sort? We have a Wikipedia. And we use Wiki, which actually so works very well, except all these plugins out there don't even look at it. I mean, there's a ton of plugins that don't work with Wiki, even though it's been around for a long time. So are you WordPress, familiar with the uh, arguments that you can plug into a custom loop for WordPress? You see, without workarounds. No, 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 this is, this is the work, this is the process for WordPress. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there's arguments that you can plug into the custom WordPress queries, mm -hmm. the order and the order by arguments. And you can order by, I think there's like 15 things, something yeah. like that. Just imagine. And you can do ascending or descending. So there is quite a few options there. Um, but it talk to us after, because your, your question is very deep. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't work right. I, I work with two or three of the developers, the programs, you know, the up level. Right. And it took them a long time to figure out how to get a natural sort. And their solution for me was just a bunch of workarounds. But like talking about social problems. Yeah. So search and you want to solve the search. But you're not going to solve like browsing by category. Like my my customers. Let's go on to another question, oh, just because okay. you got a good question, but it's going to be a bigger question. Okay. Yeah, it's solved right now. Go ahead. Um, but there is sort. There is a lot of sort options. We can, I can tell you about them. I can pull them for you too. Yeah. Keep going, Dan. Okay. Go ahead. Is there any way to make a site with like a lot of content run faster? Is that like a plugin policy? That's a very uh, loaded question, I guess. Site speed is always hard to judge without looking at your site individually. Um, what can contribute to a slow site are a lot of plugins running, um, a th specific theme, uh, how you're loading your assets. So if you don't have a content delivery network set up, like uh, 
um, what is it that's included in Jetpack? Uh, what's the one included in Jetpack? I can't remember. I'm spacing right now. Uh, Photon, yeah, Photon. Um, so, site speed is kind of a hard thing to know without looking at your site in specific. So if you'd like, uh, grab one of my cards or just come up to me at some point and I'll take a look at your site and kind of figure it out from there. But yeah, that, that's a hard question just because there's so many things that could be going on there. Two more minutes, a yeah. couple more questions. Go ahead. Sure. Okay. Um, so let's see. Can you explain what a builder is first? Sure. Can you, can you repeat the question just for the camera? Too? Yeah. I'll so the the uh, question was uh, why builder themes and themes that use short codes are problematic for your site. And I'm not going to name specific names. I've done that on my blog, and people got very upset with it. But the Short answer is if you ever need to change that theme or if you ever need to troubleshoot something or if a plugin isn't working correctly with your site, 99% of the time it's because of that. Um, by using short codes and everything like that aside from actual page templates and the proper theme building methods, you're pulling in functions that when the theme is disabled, they no longer exist. So if you're switching to 2012 to troubleshoot a plugin or a theme, your site will not operate. It won't be viewable. Uh, this is a problem we run into all the time with WooCommerce. So yeah, in short, it's just very hard to troubleshoot. One more question. Go ahead. Um, so I wanted to know, where are some good resources or websites to learn how to do your own advanced custom fields and like repeaters and stuff like that? Currently, I use the plugin for it, but I always wanted to do it myself. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, there's a few depending on how comfortable you are with actually coding. Mm -hmm. um, there's the, you can use plugins like you mentioned, and that's uh, WP, WP types and WP views. Mm -hmm. They can let you do all of that. Um, alternatively, there are, I think it's WP generator or something like that, but you plug in what you want that to do and it'll actually generate the function that you can include in a plugin or your theme. Um, and then finally, the codex. Uh, I know people hate when you point to that because it's kind of dry reading and it's uh, kind of spread out, but ultimately that is the one-stop answer for anything that you need to do. Um, but yeah, you'd be looking into uh, registering taxonomies and post types and things like that. So if you look up that, I'm sure you'll find a guide somewhere. But thanks, Danny. Thanks.